Hi guys, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Dane, and I'm here in the brand new studio. Now, Gemma and Sally already had a chance at dipping their toes in the water last week, making a super cute bento cake recipe for you guys. So make sure you go and check that out. And also, if you're not subscribed, why not? The button is right below this video. You get notified every time we upload every Thursday, and sometimes there's cheeky videos in there on Tuesdays. So if you're subscribed, then you won't miss them. Um, but obviously new studio, we did a studio tour and that is also on the YouTube channel so go and check that video out. And this beautiful mural painted by Rich aka House Homer over on Instagram is debuted over on our Bait Club. You can find behind the scenes action of him creating it over a week that he spent with us um, over on patreon.com forward slash cupcake Gemma. Now today's recipe is for passion fruit and milk chocolate macarons. Now I mentioned this in my very first video with Gemma making macarons. I was pretty expressionless, just stood there, and I didn't really have um, much energy or character about me. So if you want a bit of a laugh, go over and check that video out. But you guys have been asking for the recipe for such a long time. It's been like four years or something. So today I'm finally gonna give it to you. And they are a two-tone shell. It's pale yellow and a nice, beautiful purple color filled with a milk chocolate and passion fruit ganache. It's super silky, a little bit tart, and we're using passion fruit puree. They are absolutely delicious, if I do say so myself. It's my favorite flavor, but we're gonna get started with the ganache, because that needs to set up in the fridge. So, in a bowl, I've got some milk chocolate. I've got 255 grams going in there and then I've also got some passion fruit puree. Now, I'm using this that you can get in this pouch here. Um, it's pretty handy, you can get it online, and you can use fresh passion fruits, but I just find this is a little bit better because you get more, sometimes you get, don't get enough juice out of fresh passion fruits, um, and this is like 90% fruit and 10% sugar, so it's pretty much all passion fruit. That's going into the bowl here, and all of the um, amounts for everything I'm using today obviously will be in the description box below. And then I've got some double cream going in. Um, just a tiny bit, it's like 30 grams, and you just need that little bit of dairy just to set the ganache. So I'm gonna go over to here, over the hob on the back. I've already got a pan of slightly simmering water, and I'm just gonna pop it over and just let the chocolate melt and stir occasionally until it becomes a nice, silky, smooth ganache. The ganache is ready. It's been on the hob for nearly 10 minutes and it's super silky smooth and shiny, but this needs to cool down a little bit before we pop it in the fridge and chill it for a couple of hours. You want it to set up nice and firm so that we can pipe it into the shells. Next, we're gonna make the shells. So I've got 190 grams of ground almonds here and 205 grams of ice and sugar, both going into a food processor to blitz them up until they're nice and fine. So I've this about 20 times just to get it to a nice kind of super fine consistency. It's gonna pop it into a bowl here with a sieve set over the top and we'll just sieve this to get rid of any lumps. Just a couple of lumps left in the sieve, not too many and it won't make a difference to the recipe. So you just wanna discard those and throw them in the bin. Next, we're gonna make a paste with some egg whites. So I've got 72 grams of egg whites here that I'm gonna add into the almonds and icing sugar and mix it until it starts to become a paste. And because we're gonna do two colors, I need to separate it equally. So I've got some scales here, and two extra bowls, and a couple of spatulas, and my food colorings, and some teaspoons. So what I'm gonna do is just tear the scales, have them at zero, weigh this whole mixture, and then I'm gonna divide it by two, and mix a quarter of a teaspoon of purple coloring into one, and a quarter of a teaspoon of yellow coloring into the other. The food coloring to color these shells. I'm actually using a paste, or you can use a gel. They're much better than using something like an oil-based food coloring, um, just because it doesn't bake as well, and sometimes actually they'll end up a little bit mottled looking on top. So paste and gels are best. Next, we're gonna just leave these to the side. They are totally fine, and we'll get on with making the Italian meringue. So for this, it's very important that you get your sugar syrup to 118 degrees and the egg whites are to a soft peak consistency. If you get any of those wrong, just start again. 
because you don't want your meringue to be ruined. And if the temperature is too high, then your shells will be really hard and crunchy. And that's not what we want at all. So for the sugar syrup, I'm gonna put 190 grams of caster sugar and 60 grams of water into a small saucepan. I'm gonna pop the saucepan onto the hob on a medium heat and pop a sugar thermometer in there. We need to reach between 112 and 114 degrees before we start whipping the egg whites. Now the syrup's up to temperature, I'm gonna add 72 grams of egg whites to my clean mixer bowl and get it whipping on a high speed. The sugar syrup has reached 118 degrees and the egg whites have whipped up to soft peaks. Now we're gonna pour the syrup down the side of the bowl, not touching the whisk, in a steady motion. And it's gonna turn it up to full speed and whip it for about five minutes until it's cooled down to room temperature. The meringue is ready. It's nice and cool. It still has a little bit of warmth to it, but it's kind of like room temperature. So this is what it should look like. Super thick, glossy, and it has a bit of a peak to it. That's very satisfying, isn't it? So we're just gonna tap all of this off the side of the bowl so that we incorporate all of the meringue. And then, because we've got two colors, we're again gonna weigh all of this and divide it by two. So what I've done is taken each half and I've taken about a third from each half of that meringue and mixed it vigorously into each color just to slacken the mix a bit because the almond paste mixture is quite thick. So if you try and mix the meringue in just straight away, it's gonna be really hard and um, you'll lose quite a lot of air. So once we've made a paste, you can see the colors lightened a bit as well. That is exactly the color that we want. It's gorgeous. So now I'm just gonna continue adding the rest of the meringue folding in the figure of an eight. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape around the sides and cut through the middle until it's all combined. So they are both fully mixed. I've already got one in a piping bag, but I wanted to keep one out to show you the consistency that this mixture should be. So it's really thick like that. And you can mix it a couple of more times just so that when you lift it up, it kind of ribbons off and it will fall back into the mixture. And what you want to do is kind of leave it there for about 30 seconds and it will kind of all go to one flat mass. But you can maybe see a couple of lines of wet ribboned into it. That's like the perfect texture. You don't want to over mix it because then it'll be too runny and they'll look really, really flat on the baking sheet. You don't want them to be like paper thin. Um, and if you under mix it, then they'll be really thick and they'll just be a bit chunky and not as nice as we want them to be. So that is that. And I'm just gonna pop this into a piping bag and then we'll start piping. But I've already got the yellow one ready, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this. Um, so I've got some, I've got three baking sheets here already pre-lined with some grease proof paper. I find that the grease proof paper is better to bake with rather than something like um, a sill pad, those like silicone mats. Um, and I've got a template underneath. Now, I don't bake these all the time, so I've got a template, which is really handy. And you can actually find this particular size template on the Bake Club um, over on there. You can print it out for yourselves. So I fitted this with an Ateco 804. It's a really small nozzle. If you have it too big, then it's just kind of like, you haven't really got as much control. And it's just in a reusable piping bag. You can get these on cupcakegemma.com. They're really handy and they come in two sizes. And I'm just gonna put my piping bag vertical to the tray, start piping about half a centimeter high, and then do a little flourish. Easy as that. Fabulous. So these are not quite ready to bake yet. We need to kind of tap all of the air bubbles out. So what I'm gonna do is just pick up the tray and <laughs> slam it down. <laughs> they hate this when I do this in the kitchen, but you gotta do it because all those air bubbles will come to the surface and make a smoother top. And then any that you can still see on here, what we'll do is just get a cocktail stick and let's find one. 
like here, we will just wiggle it and the air bubble will kind of pop and then the mixture will fall back in on itself to make a smooth surface. There. And then once you've done all of those, I'm going to do the other two. I'm going to pop the oven on because we need to leave these to form a skin until it's dry and then we can bake them. So I'm going to pop the oven on to 165 and I'll continue to tap the air out of these. After about 30 to 40 minutes, they will have formed a skin and then we can pop them in the oven to bake for 11 minutes. So these are now baked and I just wanted to show you, they've puffed up a little bit, but they'll sink down. So if you think they'll be like more risen than this, but if you think they're, they're not baked, they are. Even if they kind of separate from the top of the shell and the bottom where it touches the tin, they will sink back down and then you will get that nice crinkly foot. So uh, be patient and let these cool and then we can pair them up and fill them. So I'm just pairing these up just to see if they match. They do. And they look great. You can see the little foot on there. And you might have some colors that you might have like more yellow or you might have more purple. I mean, just match them up. Whatever you've got, just fill them. It doesn't really matter as long as they've got a filling. We just eat the shell on their own. They're pretty delicious as they are. So I've got these yellow ones left, but I've got no space on the tray. So I'll just slide these to the side. And then I've got my milk chocolate ganache here that's been chilling in the fridge for about three hours-ish. Um, it's pretty firm, but I can still scoop. It's like spreadable, right? Super thick. And then what I'm gonna do is just pop it in this piping bag, fitted with the same nozzle that we piped the shells with. So it is an Ateco 804, it's super small. And then we'll start piping. Look at this, it smells amazing. I can really smell that passion fruit. Take that all the way down. And again, like we piped the shells, I'm just gonna do a little blob on here. Like that. And then I'll pop the lid on. I'm gonna do all of them and then I'll pair them up. Very, very happy with these. I mean, it's my favorite flavor and I think they just look perfect. So, they're not ready to eat yet. If you haven't watched any of our macaron videos, you'll know that I always prefer them to be left in the fridge for like a day, I think I said two days, but a day is fine. Just a good, solid amount of hours, like six hours, it's like a school day, right? So, make them in the morning, come home, and you can eat them. Um, they just kind of mature and the shell kind of just becomes one with the filling and they get a little bit softer as well. You still have that bite, but they're just a lot more delicious. Well, I've already put some in the fridge and I think Sally is gonna come in and try them with me because she's also been waiting many years to try these. Yeah, do you know what? He told you guys that he'd been talking about these for four years since he first did the video. I've known him for like seven years and this is like, <laughs> I swear he told me about these on the day I met him. So yeah. Seven years I have been waiting. Seven years. <laughs> I hope it's worth the wait. I hope so too. I actually haven't even tried one of these when you were making some the other week for testing and stuff like that. Like, I wa I'm it. waiting to this moment. Yeah. Okay. Let's try All right. It We're going to do it together. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Here goes. <laughs> I'll give you my honest opinion. Mmm. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. Right? 
tangy, fruity, like. That is so, so much more passion fruity than I thought it would be. Right? Yeah, mm. it's just like the best combination. And you get that sweetness from the milk chocolate, which just like pairs perfectly. That is actually really delicious. Because mm -hmm. I saw the amount of milk chocolate and I thought, mm, how is that passion fruit going to pull through? Yeah, it really That's pulls amazing. Through. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> and wow. it is so true about the whole the whole thing that he says <laughs> about leaving them for a day. Like, they yeah. really do go so chewy. Chewy, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because I, I never usually, I just eat them straight from like mm. filling them and they all squish out everywhere. Mm. I mean, they're still delicious, but this texture is a lot better. I mean, I should say cheers to Pierre Armain because that was the inspiration for this flavour combination. He does one in his stores, so yeah, just perfect. Thanks, Pierre. I just put my own little two-tone touch on it. It's delicious. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. I am actually genuinely really impressed. <laughs> and I do Good. think that's my favourite of your macaron that I've ever had. And you've yeah. made a lot of macarons. I've made a lot, yeah. I've made a lot. I'm not lying. <laughs> that was really good. Mm, okay. Wow. We've got some more exciting things coming up that we've been working on. Mm. What have you been working on? I've been working on a really simple little treat, which um, is like cookie dough ice cream sandwiches. Because mm. my favorite ice cream is cookie dough ice cream, but all I do is like eat out the chunks of cookie dough. <laughs> so I thought, why don't I do it the other way around where there's loads of cookie dough yeah. and just a little bit of ice cream. Yeah, 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 that sounds really mm. good. And I've had it, and I've had a few squares. <laughs> a few? You ate like, like the, the entire whole slab. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, very delicious. And I've been working on a chocolate bundt cake recipe that is like really moist, and they're mini bundt mm. cakes too, so you can make them for any Ooh, with that chocolate occasion. sauce. The chocolate sauce. Oh, you just wait. Hard. It's so simple, but so, it's really decadent. It's exactly what you want from a chocolate sauce. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, and then we've also got loads of other stuff coming. We've been um, coming with loads of cupcake recipes too. Yeah. We've been trying out this strawberry, roasted, roasted strawberry, strawberry and mint. And mint. Mm, so that's got a little bit of work to do to it, but we'll yeah. be here with that we'll very, be very here. soon. Yeah. Um, but until then, all the usuals. I mean, hashtag Cupcake Gemma and Crumbs yes, and Doilies. Absolutely. And at Cupcake Gemma, make these. I hope you like them. Tag um, Dane in them, at Dane Pemberton as well. Yeah, because I want to see these macarons. He'll judge you. In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. And you can have tips too. If you're like struggling, just send me a message and I'll like, you know, help you out on any macaron tips you might need or want. So, um, yeah. Cool. I'm always here. Alrighty. <laughs> well, until next time. Hope you enjoyed the studio. Yep. As much as we do. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye. I finished it before you. Oh, hmm. damn it. <laughs>